Hi, it's Erdal Oskar again here, and in this demonstration, I'm going to present to you how hackers attack their victims. Of course, there are lots of many different ways, and what I'm presenting is just one of many. In this presentation, I'm going to show you what hackers give us for free. Programs, games, uh, books, music, a MP3s is music, movies. So, what they do is, we think when we go to underground websites and download these files, it's good. Someone is really hating that company or that author, and they love us. That's why they spend all their time to give us these products for free, right? That's what we think. And uh, we think our basic antivirus, our basic protection should, should be modern enough to not get hacked. But I'm going to prove you wrong. How? First of all, I'm going to show you how hackers get games or movies or any file that you like, that I like, and they wrap it on the internet. They, they wrap the packet with the virus and share it on the internet. Then uh, we go and download this uh, packet, thinking we're downloading the thinking downloading the game or the files that the hacker has provided us. But in reality, they are hidden stuff. To do so, in my today's presentation, I'm going to use a program called One File Exe Maker. You can just go and download it on the internet. You can find it via favorite search engine and it's called Senas by one exe maker 2000 I got version 2.0 in front of me and I'm installing into one of my lab PCs so as soon as I install it the program is ready to run I should have a shortcut in my program sections here we go should be somewhere here Just double click on it. Here is my little program. What else are we after? Let's say a game. A game which is expensive. Uh, hackers have lots of options. I'm going to use one of the most favorite games, which is Tetris. You know, which is written by Lazarus. This is the famous Tetris game. You can just double click and install it. Uh, but in this case, I'm not going to do that. I'm just getting my game from the folder there. Browsing to the location. Going down to games. My Tetris games. Here it is. So, what is next? That's what you don't like to buy. Let's assume this is an ex expensive game, expensive movie, ex expensive program that you A. can't afford to buy, B. you don't want to buy it because you can find it on the internet, C. another reason that you got. So you think you're downloading this game, right? But let's see what hackers do in reality. They go ahead, wrap this game with a virus, which you don't want to take, right? Ah, not folder, sorry. I'm just going back, going to my proxy server tools, to my folder, let me just browse, true, Trojan types, let's get my mm, proxy server Trojan, and let's get macafi.exe, it's a virus, and let's define a port for us to be able to reach our victim's computer I'm using port 8080 you can go we can hide the program we can minimize it I'm just gonna make it in a normal mode just for the demonstration purposes you can uh, copy the wires into Windows in the system in the temp file you can uh, basically having the option to copy itself to execute itself of course of course, I'm going to let it to execute itself. Let's save this as one file. Let's save it into my desktop. And let's call it... Uh, 
Tetris or anything you like. Save. Notice this file is now 211 kilobyte and the original file was only 200 kilobyte. A hacker will usually go now to the internet, uh, to underground websites and he or she will share these games in these forms hoping that someone is going to download it. And you, the victim, are going to go to that site, download the game, saying yes, I got a beautiful game, totally for free. And here is my game, let's start it. This is Tetris as you can see. You can just, uh, you know, play the game. But, I don't know if you noticed. Of course, just for the demonstration purposes, I showed you, as soon as you click to the game, you notice that at the background, it started to create a connection request to the server. So, while you're watching your movie, while you're reading your ebook, while you download the music, playing game, installing your operating system, whatever you get for free, this is what you pay in reality. And uh, let's check the task manager. You will see that Lazarus is there. Looks perfect, right? Nothing else is running at the background. No. Now I want you to go to the processes. As you can see, lazaris.exe is still there. That was the original file, what we called. If you scroll down, I also ex wrapped a program called mcafi.exe. Let's open command prompt. Uh, let's run a command net state. And look at this. This little program has already started to create a connection. They try to establish a connection. I can just uh, show you another example. We can just leave it running or we can just close it. Uh, yes, I'm going to show you what's going to happen from the hacker side as well. Uh, I, I want you to show now also a a Trojan, how a Trojan lets an attacker connect to your computer and manages your computer. To do so, I'm going to my Windows 8 PC. My HyperV is just connecting me. I'm just sending Ctrl Alt Delete. Entering my password. Alright, let's, uh, let's get infected with the virus. Of course, nobody's going to go double click what I'm doing now for the virus, but remember in my previous exercise, I wrapped it with a program and uh, with a program that which you want, such as Tetris, and you or anybody else were going to download it. Alright, I'm good, go going to install. Let's get the. Uh, HTTP, HTTPS Trojans, HTTP Red Trojan, and let's double click on it. This program is basically called HTTP Red, created by Zombie. And as you can see, you can just have a few notification there. You can send notification if the IP address is connected. Uh, I'm not going to do that for now. You can close any firewalls and it has some other uh, latest verges in this <laughs> URL as well. Probably I wouldn't connect there anyway. Let's create the file. As you can see, as soon as I clicked create, it is creating it and it did create a HTTP server file. Beautiful. All good. Now, let's go and double click into it. That's what you're going to send to the to victim. As soon as you double click, it's going to run at the background, if you don't believe me. Here's my uh, Windows 8 Task Manager, you know, I open just Task Manager. If you scroll down, nothing look very suspicious, right? Look at the performance, everything looks really nice and easy. But I want you 
to go back to processes and look into HTTP HTTP server connection. Did I double click on it? Probably I didn't. Let's do it again. As soon as I do that, it should just create a service here. Let's press H and here it is. As you can see, you can go to properties. Uh, look at this. It is in this computer. Why I do not know that? It's not in this computer. When I do IP compare to this computer, is dot eighty, and this is connecting to dot twelve. It's actually the location is dot twelve. Sorry. It's located there. We remember we did copy it. What else? It looks like legitimate file. Unless you're really suspicious, unless you know what you're doing, you can always uh, go and search online of what this file is. Or, for this demonstration purposes, uh, I'm just gonna move to my server where I manage this Trojan, which is my server 2008, can be 2012, no difference. I'm just opening a web browser. Remember the IP address? 10.80. And look at this. Now I got full connection to the remote computer. I can see the running processes. I can browse the computer. I can get computer information. I can stop the program which I'm running, which is my virus. <laughs> I can set suggestion to the hacker. Oh, that's. You can try it from Firefox as well, by the way. You can just come to the desktop. You know, it doesn't have to be Internet Explorer, which is my favorite. And you can just type the IP address 10.10.10.80. .10 .10 I'm using zoom in, and as you can see, I can just go kill any process from here to that remote computer. And I can fully manage it from this computer. I guess this is very scary. And I guess this is a good reason why not you should download any bad files. Or any files from the internet which is not in a trusted source. Now we move into step 3. Let's go back. Alright, uh, I think I'm not going to go to step from here now. Please, I'm stopping the recording here. Please go to my blog or to where you're watching this video, YouTube or any source, and look for the third part, which is hacking Windows 7 via viruses. So uh, I'm going to make a quick introduction what we've done there as well. But uh, in the next step, I'm going also to take full control of the computer, as I just demonstrated to you a few minutes ago. Uh, I just want to keep this recording under 10 minutes usually, but this is a little bit over, so let's stop it here. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please continue visiting my blog. If you did, please continue visiting, uh, please continue giving a good feedback. Thank you very much.